Yeah, let's see you come back on. Maybe. There we go. Uh, hey. Okay, sorry about that, everybody. Now I got the great um, monitor where I can hear myself speak, which drives me crazy, but surprisingly... Uh, sorry, how did that drive you? Crazy. Very crazy. Oh, it was better when you did the hand motions. Crazy. Crazy. Cool. Um, wow. So, Paul, introduce yourself. Introduce yourself. There we go. Absolutely. So my name is Paul Tchaikovsky. I am a developer advocate at VMware. Cool. So what did we do last week? So last week, we spent some time learning how to uh, write a Helm chart to run Hugen. And I think we got a fair way there. I believe we got it running and we got an ingress uh, controller working and we were able to access Hugen and log in, uh, which there you go. You have it up on your screen right now. So that, yep. that is that the same one we deployed? It is. Um, Sweet. So yeah, we played with a product, our um, open source project called Hugen, which is github.com slash Hugen Hugen. I'll put this in the chat. There we go. Is it Hugen or is it hug in? Like an in you go to to stay at when you want hugs. So it's actually after name two ravens called Hugen and Munin. And Munin. Yeah. It's on Odin's shoulder. There yeah. you go. So it's kind of huh. cool. Um, if it's basically if the net, if the net will, mm -hmm. um, open sourced. And it's been around for a long time. And it's a Rails app. And there's some really cool things. I've seen. With I'll it. try not to hold yeah. that against it being a Rails <laughs> app. Um, I don't have the link offhand, but well, maybe for the first uh, uh, break, I'll bring it up where people have done some really awesome things with this to like wire different things together off of different APIs. Um, sure. So I thought th there was no real way to run this on Kubernetes, Kubernetes apart from running one little container. So hence the reason why I wanted to do the, the Helm chart. Um, yeah. We reached out to him. Uh, we actually started building the the Helm chart here. If you want to take a look at the PR, which I'll throw into the channel also. Um, it works basically, just like we, uh, Paul said. Um, and it deploys, if you want to take a look here we actually have it deployed and running um i get the afternoon uh, digests um i actually got the the email working which is pretty cool oh cool um oh, there's that research yeah so we so we didn't do that while we were on the call so maybe show me the section where you added that sure i would love to see what you did and i will try not to pick it apart oh you probably will, probably will uh deployment so how you can all right so if you look at this values um mm -hmm. i went ahead and continued on with the invitation code confirmed yeah. email um this is by default um we couldn't do it for zero it did actually, I tried it a few other different ways. So one day is the least. But what okay. I added was these guys. Yeah. Um, where I started adding the SMTP um, by default. And then mm -hmm. the from address, uh, which just basically dumps them as env environmental variables. And then yep. some OAuth stuff. Um, I was really hoping to get the OAuth over the weekend. But it turns out... It seems that Twitter requires you to apply to get API keys now. Oh, yeah. You have to sign up for their developer program. Yeah. But so, you could, we would be able to use the GitHub one, though. Uh, true. Um, but I was really hoping to do the uh, Twitter thing because I wanted to try to do the, um, what is it, the calculus of Corona 19 or whatever. If some, somebody says, like, um, you can have Hugen. Uh, I'll bring back up the 
site here. But that's that's different to using OAuth though, right? No. So it gets yeah. not the firehose, but one of the lower tier using the OAuth. Yeah, but that's token. that's that's different to OAuth, right? So you use OAuth to authenticate your end users. You don't use OAuth to authenticate the app itself. The app would have an API key. Interesting. Um, right. Okay, well, we'll go back to that. Yeah, uh, we'll go back to that. For yeah. Sure. Yes. Anyway, the idea we're getting is, on a tangent. Yeah, you let's, go, let's, yeah. Keep, let's stick to the Helm chart yes. and finish showing me off where you added the uh, so you added the SMTP setting and the OAuth settings. Yep. So inside the chart, no, not the chart, the templates. Templates. Deployments. Uh, deployments. So as you can see here, you literally just found yep. out it was just a bunch more of these. Perfect. Um, I also now one added... thing I'll point out here. Oh, sure. Oh, you're moving too quickly for me. Yeah. Is all of these things will show up in the deployment.yaml, and so when we have things like the OAuth key and OAuth secret, mm -hmm. those are effectively being stored in plain text in etcd okay. uh, and fairly readily available. So one of the things you often do is you create a config map and a secret and you fill these values in there and then you can actually do ends from and pick the config maps and secrets you want to load up environment variables from and that way they don't show up in the uh, deployment at yaml and so that helps keep your deployment at yaml clean mm. and it also helps keep your secrets in a secret place okay um, not necessarily something we need to do right now. I'll just get quickly mentioning that because that's what I'll usually do when I get to usually even four or five um, environment variables, I'll start to think about breaking them into separate config maps and secrets. So where would something like HashiCorp Vault fit into this? Where instead of using config map or you use a config map to talk to HashiCorp Vault that has the secret inside of it? Or... Right. So I feel like you either use Vault as a, a backing store for your secrets, and that way you continue using secrets. Mm -hmm. But instead of creating one as part of the Helm chart, you would actually assume that they already exist in Vault. Mm. So what else? What, what I usually will do is once I have a secret for doing environment variables, I can then not set those secrets in Helm and have them in a pre-created secret. And that then allows me to pre-create that secret from whatever I want. Even if I'm running some commands to like curl the values from Vault and then passing them through to a kubectl create secret. I feel like I need a, white, a whiteboard. Right. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think that's probably a bit more advanced than what we need to worry about right now. Mm -hmm. Um, but certainly, if you were going to run this in production, you would want to think about how you were injecting those secrets into uh, the application. Yeah. What we're doing right now works just fine for figuring out how to run it and creating a Helm chart. And we don't want to get lost in trying to adhere to best practices if we're still just trying to get the damn thing to work. I have this guy on my security team that we can bring into this call right now and be like, hey, I need to make this production value. How, how do we do, do do this? You know, you want to do that? No. Yeah, let's not do that. No, OK. All right. Um, so as you can see. So, I, so, yeah. so basically what I'm saying is what you have done to add those values in is exactly what I would do mm -hmm. up until the point I decide I, it's time to break them out into a secret and config map separately. Awesome. So you are doing a good job. Perfect. Um, after the learning about notes, uh, yeah. I added some default things. So to be like, hey, you haven't ed edited the SMT password because I put yeah. it as some password. You should probably, you know, change that. <laughs> yep. um, OAuth key yeah, and I, re I really like what you've done. Um, you can tell it to error out. But the problem with telling it to error out is you then give people a chart that doesn't work by default. Mm -hmm. And so I prefer a chart that works, but yells at you. 
-hmm. versus a chart that doesn't work. Also, I think you're missing a double close bracket uh, after the GitHub oh. OAuth key fill out. You're right. You're right. Good eye. Boom. This is why I get paid the <laughs> mediocre dollars. <laughs> um, I will also say, uh, I did like, where was it? Um, I'm not going to show it because for obvious reasons, but if you go into here, I did create a, my values YAML that mm -hmm. I have all my, my keys and my changes on there. So every time I made a change in my values, then I took that same thing, put it in values and then made the edit inside the notes.txt. So I kind of kept yeah. it as like a, a, if you will, a pipeline. Um, yeah, so I, I have a similar, I have a similar workflow. So when I'm first creating a chart, I throw it all in values mm -hmm. and when I'm getting close to actually publishing a chart, I will copy that and then nullify all of the values that I, the personalized for me. And then I work from that values file and try to remember to upstream anything new. Yep. Uh, and that seems to work well. Occasionally I'll miss something, but usually find it pretty quick. Okay. Um, uh, and then you have a git ignore so that my values isn't being not added yet. to GitHub accidentally? Uh, so we have two branching ideas here. Um, the original goal uh, for anyone who is watching is for us to get this into the Helm Hub because if you've actually read through the um, PR, uh, all with respect to uh, Dominic and the work he's done, uh, it's, it's a little bit overwhelming for him. Um, and in essence, the short of it is, um, where is it? Uh, however, I can't promise we'll merge this will effectively be, I would be the maintain. Um, yeah, I have to keep it going because he just doesn't have the, doesn't have the understanding. Mm -hmm. So, uh, talking to CZ about this earlier, uh, we'll probably just take this PR and then put it either under our namespace or somewhere else, uh, and then try to push this up into the uh, Helm Hub. I haven't actually searched yet, so I should probably do this yet. You can, nothing, perfect. Wouldn't it have been amazing if somebody already had a production ready Hugen Helm oh, chart up there? Be, that, this is story of my goddamn life. Um, Language, JJ, there's children listening. <laughs> uh, so, the ultimate, so he gave us some really good um, best practices, uh, mm -hmm. which I hate that term. I hate that term too. Mm -hmm. um, but there are some really good uh, short things, like for instance, moving to the single process image. Single process, which I think we to, talked about that right at the yep. end of the stream, right? Well, yeah. because we discovered it existed. <laughs> we didn't yeah. know it ex existed, um, which was nice. Uh, um, okay, and he says use Postgres. Uh, Hang on, why? Because it causes less problems. But yeah, that works for me. <laughs> uh, and that actually should be reasonably easy to do. Okay. Given that we built the enable disabled bit for, uh, what's the other one, MariaDB. Mm -hmm. So we should be able to do a similar thing for a Postgres dependency. Nice. Um... Uh, and then we can, I don't know if we want to have to support both or if we just want to make a choice. We should probably just cut Maria and just do Postgres, I think. Could we just do it as an environmental variable? Just be like, do DB equals Postgres? Yeah, and we could, it. but for the same reason, Dominic doesn't want to support the Helm chart. Do you want to support multiple databases? I don't even like databases. Exactly. <laughs> so like if Dominic's recommendation is to go with Postgres, we should just go with Postgres. Okay. Uh, okay. So that's probably a, a good a good thing we could do, uh, and then I think working out how to host a Helm repo mm -hmm. uh, and then get that upstreamed into uh, the Helm hub would be really good. I don't know that it's quite ready to be upstreamed to Helm hub, but we could certainly build out the infrastructure to do the Helm uh, Helm repo, uh, and just uh, just under your GitHub uh, okay. namespace uh, and use GitHub Pages. The Helm community has built some pretty good tooling around that, which I can show you when we're ready. Perfect. Um, 
all this one wants some some CDCI or CICD. And <laughs> you and your CDCI. It just it's just stuck. It got stuck. It, I don't know. That's how JJ lives. He deploys and then he tests. Exactly. exactly. You know all these all these chaos folks uh, talking <laughs> about testing in production. That's how JJ rolls. <laughs> um, so obviously we probably want another namespace where we can continually run this inside the Kubernetes um, that isn't the production uh, instance. Um, or do you think of something like Circle CI or something? Wait, I'm not sure. I, I don't get what you're saying. Well, over time, we're going to need some level of testing with this home chart. Am I wrong? Yeah, so the Helm, the Helm chart community already has a bunch of scaffolding for doing uh, testing and automatic publishing. Oh, okay. That works. Um, next question. Uh, an agent runner and a background jo job worker. I'm not 100% sh sure what this is. Uh... Well, hang on. Go back to... I think this might be an application a, server, yeah. an agent runner, uh, and a background. Okay, so I guess those are just other things that run that Hugen wants that aren't part of the single process. Yeah. And so you need to run them as other jobs, like that. Yeah. So if you if you roll down, he's showing the production. So they've got Nginx. Oh, they've got Let's Encrypt with Nginx. Cool. Um, so we'll get we'll get roughly that from using uh, the Ingress controller. Mm. Uh, Postgres, Hugen Web is here's that agent right there. So I guess Hugen Web is the main Hugen, and yeah. then um, DJ delayed DJ job. DJ. Don't know what that means. Oh, so I, I guess that's like a contabby kind of thing. So if you say I want this to run at some point in the future, that that runner probably manages that. Okay. Yeah. So this is the disadvantage of splitting it out is we now need to basically either run them all in the one process. All in the one container in the one pod, or we need to break them out into separate uh, containers and or separate pods. Mm. Um, from the look of this, I would suggest that the delayed jobs would go into a separate uh, deployment because it looks like you can have multiple replicas of that. Um, and I don't know enough about the rest of them to uh, say. Can you scroll back up? What's the mm -hmm. difference between the Hugen web and Hugen itself? So it's Hugen There's web not, says it is. Web is the main thing. Um, the rest okay. of it's just internet, yeah. I don't internet stuff. I guess I don't know my. Is this Docker Swarm or is it this just was Docker, Docker Compose? Compose. Yeah, it's been a while since I've used Docker Compose, so I'm just seeing a few things like the extends that I'm not familiar with. So if you scroll down to Hugen Web, there's a um, depends on uh, right at the top extends oh. file and service. Hmm. So I'm not a hundred percent sure. It depends, I think, just affects the start order, Got it. and then links sets up the environment variables so they can talk to each other. Um, but this all feels quite doable. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also think you're going to spend most of the most of the stream either implementing the, this or working on the uh, Helm chart repository and getting that stuff done. So I guess it depends on what what order of priority you want to actually tackle this work. If you want to do this before we upstream it, or if you want to upstream it and then start implementing this, I guess, is there much call for people being able to, put, to uh, play with this right now? Or do you think we're better served getting it into a more production ready state before we share it? 
I think a production ready state. Um, mingling because this was just a pet project, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but the idea that you could use this with just a helm chart, I helm chart, uh, seems at least a, the barrier to entry to get Hugan up and running right. is significantly lower. lower. Um, All right. Well, how about we do this? Mm-hmm. Um, why don't we create a new Git repo under your uh, under your GitHub account? Uh, and actually, let's go to GitHub slash Helm. Okay. Is there a template? Uh, and then look for action. Uh, and then there should be the chart rep- repo actions demo. So this should be a basic uh, Helm chart repo that if you were to clone, if you were to fork, not fork this because you don't want to fork it. If you were to clone this down and then push it up in your own namespace, mm-hmm. you could then add the Hugen chart and delete the existing ones. And it would basically start managing a Helm chart repo for you in GitHub pages under that repo. Um, why is this not a template? Why is it not a template? Yeah. As, as in what? Like a GitHub template? Because it's a working demo? Yeah, you can keep demo, or you can keep templates like living. Cool. I mean, it could be, I guess. Okay. Maybe I'll put an issue in. Okay. Um, let's see here. So, see a source GitHub. Um, GGS. Okay. You, what do you, what? what so you, this is yeah. going to be like a, uh, it's not really a, it's a mono repo, right? Of Helm mm-hmm. charts that you own, right? So whatever you want. So I would just call it charts and that way it'll be under jjashka.github.io slash charts. Got it. Um, Got it. And so I do a get, it, get in it. Did you want me to clone this, clone this down? No, we can, we can do that later uh, okay. and just copy the files in as long as we remember the right structure. Get in it. Right. Here. Uh, and then you want to do uh, you want to make a directory called charts slash Hugen. No charts slash Hugen. So charts charged. Wow. Yeah. Well, because the repo name is charts, and it's just because you usually have the directory name the same as the repo name. Uh. Because if you if you go back to the GitHub repo, you'll see that there's a charts. Yep. Oh, yep. And that has all of the charts in it. Got it. Yep. Okay. And so if you copy two, hold on two things. The... Two things. I'm gonna put myself on mute and get the screaming to stop and go turn on a light. <laughs> I'll be right back. All right. Okay, viewers, now that JJ is gone, we can talk about him. No, we're not going to talk about him behind his back. Okay, hopefully that'll be a little bit better. Okay. No worries, we were just having a conversation about you while you weren't in the room. I expect nothing, nothing less. All right. Oh, and uh, Noob Runner, thank you the fall f- for following. Appreciate that. Okay. So, in the charts repo, so we can just copy. Yeah, this. but I, I, let's nope. not worry about. Yeah, so we'll copy our existing chart into here. Yeah, that's right. Sorry, I thought yep. you were going to grab the upstream and try and do nope. that. Perfect. That'll do it. There we go. Yeah. 
Okay. E dot get ignore ignore um, my value dot yaml yaml there you go get status okay awesome next all right, so we're just going to start working down his list of uh, responses and his issues, right? Yes. That's, that's what you wanted to do, work yep. on, yeah. So let's start by doing Postgres, maybe. Oh, you don't want to move it to the Hugin single process image? Uh, I mean, as soon as we do that, we also need to figure out the other bits. So That's I figure true. we can do Postgres and deploy, make sure it works, and then start moving up the stack. OK. Uh, so if you go to Helm Hub, we'll first of all need to find an appropriate um, Postgres chart to uh, use. Uh, and I think I mentioned when, when in doubt, I will prefer to use the Bitnami. Uh, Bitnami charts, as they do a really good job of keeping the underlying Docker images up to date for vulnerabilities, as well as keeping the chart itself up to date and also have some really good um, consistent practices around how they do their Helm charts. Maybe just do PostgreSQL. It might not do partial word searches. No? Weird. Oh, no. Um, just click um. on the Bitnami on the left. Up, 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 down, 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 nearly there. Yep, there we go. <laughs> uh, it's in alphabetical order, so keep going. PHP B B B. Hell yeah. Oh, Postgres. There it is. Well, yeah. Now. I think using just the straight Postgres is fine. Uh, I kind of feel, for the most part, most like a lot of people aren't super comfortable running databases in Kubernetes yet. Yeah. Uh, so I feel like if you're going to run a, Kube a database, you should probably, if you're running an Amazon, use their database or whatever. Um, so I'm cool with just using the regular Postgres as our dependency. Same here. All right. Chart. Postgres SQL version 873. Ah. And post Postgres SQL. Yeah. And then. Go to values, Maria. Okay. So, so switch to Postgres. If you scroll down, it'll show you the values they use. Yeah. Ah, oh, crap. Uh, oops. Postgres. Oh. Yeah. That's a good idea. Um, Postgres QL, just for yep, consistency. consistency. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so we have enabled. So we want to find what's their equivalent root user. It looks like Postgres Admin. QL. Password. This one. Yeah. So let's change root user to Postgres QL password. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then we need to find the equivalent of DB user uh, name and password. Yeah. DB right here. Uh, hang on, you're looking at the globals. You, you, we probably don't want to be using the globals right now. Um, they're more useful if you've got a lot of charts working together. Mm. There we go. Oh my God, look at that, look at that. So you'll notice these aren't under no. 
uh, their own namespaces. So yeah. you're going to have post, PostgreSQL colon PostgreSQL PostgreS user. Oh, that's horrible. You should you should paste that just to make sure because yeah. it's good. God. Okay, and then this is username. No, it's database name. Hmm. Postgres username. Yeah, but you just deleted the database name. The username's below it. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's the same value, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah. And password. Jesus, this mm -hmm. is so gross. Yeah. And um, you'll find it's probably just legacy naming consistency for the original Postgres charts. Hmm. Uh, and then probably the other thing we want to do is the persistence. Uh, so just do a word search for persistence. Mm -hmm. right. There we go. Yeah. Persistence. So basically you can, you can kill the master and drop the other one back a couple of tabs. You mean spaces? That too. Like that? Awesome. So that should be all we need to do. Well, um, no. Do we have to edit the deployment? Can you Yeah, yeah. Sorry. All we need to do for the values file. <laughs> I'm paying attention. Yeah, you sure are. All right. There we go. Now, what we would do here, mm -hmm. if we wanted to make it optional, is we would set the value to be values, Postgres, database name, then pipe, and then default values, MariaDB, DB name. And that way, if one didn't exist, it would default to the other. Do we want to? No, I don't think we should. I think okay. that's. I'm just saying that's how one way you can like Got deal it. with that issue where you're going to have multiple databases. Uh, but in this case, certainly just uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> that one? Yep. Uh nearly. Oh. So you wanna God damn. Yeah. So if you join to me to show you a trick? Yes. Alright, so right above where you're doing databases. Mm hmm So right after env, add a new line before the first name. And do uh, double open quote. Uh, sorry, du double open moustache. My my words aren't working. And then with space dot values dot PostgreSQL. Values well, dot um, PostgreSQL. Yeah, uh, and then close close. Uh, and then at the end of, um, so you'll, yeah, do end. Yeah. Consistency. I like it. Right. Uh, and so now you can just do dot Postgres username, put dot Postgres password. So you don't need the entire listing. Yep. I like it. Username. Username. 
in the middle is a double post. Oh, yeah. Good call, New Brunner. Sorry, I just noticed you said that. Off of the password, yeah. Yep. Um, I need ticks around these. Like that. Yeah, it's always a good idea too, especially passwords. Okay. Uh, so, uh, database password, you need to take off the Postgres at the start of it. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, database adapter is right. Hang database on. Host. Hang on. It's never that easy. Never that easy. Uh, where was it? What are you um, looking for? Remember there was some... Was it in the environment? We had to change it. Example. Mm, there we go. Database adapt MySQL two. Mm. Still a word search for Postgres. See if they had a alternative example there. No, oh, yeah. I was gonna go get the docs. Postgres. Nope. Nope. Postgres. Postgres EMV. There we go. Um, you can. No, they don't. They don't have it here, so maybe you only need to set it that if it's MySQL. But that the, port. Uh, yeah. Port. Wait, hang on. No. SP address. Go back to your uh, chart, your code. All right, so we have database name, username, host, and port. So I think that database host and port are okay. Um, and if you set them, then you use the, data, the database adapter. Let's just run this and see what happens. So stick the, do you know what the default Postgres port is? I'm assuming. Five, four, yep. three, two. Yep, that would be a good assumption. Okay. Uh, now, one thing in the chart right there. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Go back to your... Um, where you have the database host, that's not going to work. Oh. Because Why you've... You've, inside this with statement, we have jailed the root of the values and so we need to put that outside of the with statement like that um yep but you want uh yeah that'll be fine thanks new runner saw your post or your message Uh, let's see here. Helm. Delete. Hugan. Oop. Delete. There we go. Install. Nope. Yeah. Didn't it help install? Oh, uh, yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. Yep, that should work. Oh, yeah, you need to do a Helm dependency update. All right. Hmm. Uh, line forty four. Oops. Forty four. Up. Oh. Up. Oh. Huh. Yes. Yeah, I find the highlighting on any of your editors with a combination of like YAML and templates tends to get pretty wacky. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, look at that. Look at your warnings. Isn't that nice? So good. I'm learning. All right. All right, well, let's hit up that URL. Um, oh, no, hold on. Reset the admin Stern. password. Oh yeah! Oh my God! Look, I look think at it's. You. Oh wait, no, no, no. We should see a we should see a bunch of Ruby um, stuff. It just, yeah, because it's Ruby. It it'll take an hour to actually start. Forty five minutes. How did we get to the point where it takes Ruby apps longer to start than Java apps? Like, nope. how did that happen? <laughs> where did we go wrong in life? Uh. All right. There's our first adapter mistake. So it should be in PostgreSQL. I think we just did Postgres. Okay. So delete you. Uh, you could have just yeah. updated, I think, from there, but that's all right. All right, Queen. We got nothing to lose. Literally. Let's see. Yeah. Cool. All right. Mm hmm. Install. Stern. Do your thing. There we go. You good? There's Postgres. Things are happening. Foreman. Now, did I just say that the Hugen uh, container, the first thing it did was install the Postgres gem. A lot of stuff happened. You're probably gonna... No, I wouldn't worry about it. I'm just always amused when I see that because we, we try and push for, you know, immutable infrastructure and all that sort of stuff. And then we let ourselves down by doing last minute installs of gems and other stuff. <laughs> I did see. Dude, are you really going to scroll through? No. A um, thousand and a half lines of text. I am I wanted to go page up. I don't know why page, page up isn't working. There we go. Um, there was this that I'm worried. Yeah. Where is it? This. That. Yeah, that's fine. It looks like it went through it. It was just... Complaining? It was expecting that to not already exist. Okay. Um, Permission deny. Hmm. Um, okay, so that... Is there a PBC? I don't think so. Wait, why is MariaDB still trying to start? Okay. Oh, I know what's going on. Huh. What's that? Yeah, do uh, oh. MariaDB still exists in your charts directory? So one of the weird things with Helm. So in, if, in your current directory where you're working mm -hmm. under charts, there's a MariaDB from when you did a Helm dep update when we were still using MariaDB. Ah. Uh. And so you need to RM that. Okay. By the way, uh, Dark, uh, Dark Sky just informed me that our neighborhood is about to be hit by a really nasty thunderstorm. So oh. hopefully no power. Well, so yes, uh, on Tuesday I did a stream uh, with some of the spring folks. Uh, I believe you were watching. I was. And our house lost power three minutes after we finished the stream and oh. i was the one hosting the stream <laughs> so we got super lucky that's true oops uh, stern. let's try that again now we still did see that postgres could not modify oh was that a MariaDB era no, that was Mar a MariaDB era. never mind yep. yeah yeah that's because we killed off the MariaDB uh in values and so it was all just trying to use it defaults mm -hmm. so this is good it's looking like hugan is connecting to the database and doing its thing 
Uh, let's jump out of the log and do a get pods and see what we see. There we go. It's looking good. Nice. Uh, so, and so the refresh. there'll be a. There might be a new ingress. Oh no! Cool. Okay. Uh, and of course new.